to someone this morning and ask them, is this the time? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so let me give you an answer. Yes, this is the time. But let's make sure that we're all on the same page and asking the right question, okay? So it is Memorial Day. And therefore, it is the time. It marks for many on the uh, calendar the what they call the official beginning of the summer season, right? And uh, so for, for many of us in places that we have come from, uh, where it's cooler during the uh, winter months uh, than it is here, and it is cooler still now, uh, uh, Marissa was telling us about how she had a whole party set up outside for her grandson yesterday and everybody spent the whole afternoon inside because it was <laughs> too hot outside, right? But Memorial Day traditionally marks the beginning of the summer season when people go and have picnics and barbecues and uh, enjoy the, the, the beach and the shore. Uh, we, we're starting to realize it's time to move the thing inside and get the air conditioning cranked up. Right? And for some people it means special sales and deals on lawnmowers, which, you know, as if that's what all of Memorial Day is about, and yet my first confession is my lawnmower is falling apart, and if there's a deal on one, I'm hoping to get a new one, believe me. Um, but Memorial Day comes, and it's an in-between moment. It's a moment that if we stop listening to all of what's going on commercially and otherwise, it affords us the ability for, for just a moment to stop and to remember with our head and with our heart those who served their country and who made the ultimate sacrifice for not simply veterans, but indeed whom we remember because they gave their lives. It's a moment to hear stories about them. It's a moment for us to feel inspired as we honor their memory and as we think about as uh, the prayer that uh, Katie shared with us that I read for you, to, to think about what war really means when what we want is peace. And to pray together that someday there will be a time when we don't have to make that kind of sacrifice or consider making it. I have to say that Katie has uh, certainly inspired me, even in all her preparations. I mean, she, she, she misses today probably more than any other day of being in church. She really wanted to be here. She was coming in her, her dress blues, she said, uh, uh, and, and uh, that's what she wanted to do in honor of what today means. Uh, it's a special day for her not in some abstract way of remembering, but because she has friends that she served with who didn't come home when she got to come home. Friends who are not seeing another day. And my note said that unless she gets called into work, well, <laughs> she did it, right? She spends Memorial Day Sunday at Ninjers, as I shared with our young people, and invite you all to consider going there for just an hour at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I mean, they do an ice cream social, so you get a free ice cream. I mean, you know, you can't beat that, but just to go and spend some time with folks who have given so much of themselves. And if I know Katie, there's probably going to be a cupcake there or two as well, right? And so it is time. And in another way, it is also a moment for us to say, yes, it is time. It, this is the time. Because in Acts that we read from the first chapter today, we get an opportunity to re-remember what we all missed on Thursday, right? So we call today, uh, it's on the front cover of your bulletin, Ascension Sunday. Because, I mean, truthfully, how many of us stopped on Thursday to remember that it was Ascension Day? don't, right? We, we, it tends to go right on by us, even though I mentioned it last week in the sermon, but, you know, we still just kind of slid right on by uh, 
for many of us. And so we stop today to say this is Ascension Sunday, the day at the Sunday after that we get to remember that moment when Jesus was lifted up into the heavens to go to be with his Father, whom he had come to serve uh, through all this time. So at that moment when he's lifted up, something should be happening, right? It should be a moment to, to kick things into high gear for the, for the disciples who are remaining. And yet when we read the description in Acts, what do we find? We find the disciples are standing there in awe, gaping, gawking, staring, standing there, looking up into the heavens, and they're not quite sure what to do next. <laughs> not quite sure what the moment means. Enter two messengers. If you heard the reading carefully this morning, you might say, hey, I, I, I've heard these two messengers before. They've shown up someplace before. These two messengers in white clothes as they come. Do you remember where we saw them before? Where did we see them? Well, no, not in the Moses. That was another thing. We saw these two messengers at the tomb. When they came to anoint the body of Jesus, and the two messengers were there, but it might have been the same two messengers for all I know. And they had almost the same message. Well, it was a little different. Their message that time, you know, excuse my paraphrase, is what you're looking for in there. That was their message that, that Easter vigil morning, uh, early when the women came to anoint the body. They said, he's not there. He's not in the tomb. He's not in the grave. He has arisen as he had said. And now here they come again, like I said, maybe the same two, with maybe the same question, just a little bit change in it. This time it's, what you looking for up there? What are you looking for? It was a profound moment, an oh yeah moment, or an aha moment perhaps, as in, yeah, Jesus told us what to do. He prepared us for this. This shouldn't be a surprise. We didn't know how it was going to unfold, but yeah, it makes sense. And what did he tell them to do? Uh, all of you in my Acts Bible study ought to be able to say exactly what, right? Because we've been studying this, we've been looking at this, right? The first thing that Jesus told them to do, go back to Jerusalem and wait and pray. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Jesus didn't only tell them that that's what they should do, he practiced it for them. Our, our gospel reading this morning, the whole thing is Jesus' prayer. Jesus praying to God in the midst and in the hearing of his disciples. And we're able this morning to hear it as well, to hear his prayer. He prayed for them that they might be one. He prayed for them that they might have eternal life. He prayed for them that they might know God, because in knowing God, that's where eternal life is. He prayed that they might know what they need to know, and that they might do what they are being called to do. And he prayed for them that they might be kept safe. So Acts uh, 1, verse 14 tells us they went back to Jerusalem, and it says this, and all these, all the disciples that uh, um, Kathy read for us just a moment ago, all of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. They took the words of Jesus seriously, and they took the time, and they prayed. And it's not long until the Spirit comes. Calendar-wise for us, next Sunday we mark that day, right? Pentecost Sunday, the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean that it took seven days or ten days since Ascension was on Thursday. The, the point is that it wasn't long. 
And when the Spirit, when the day of Pentecost comes, they are filled with the Spirit. But for right now, it's time to watch and wait and pray. So this morning, what is God saying to us? What is God saying to each one of us? What is it that we need to do to take the time to be able to say, this is the time, this is the moment. It is time for us to pray, time for us to ponder, time for us to consider, time for us to ask ourselves the question, am I aligning myself with who I say that I am? Does my life have the priorities that identify me as being a chosen by God, child of God, redeemed by God? Does my life reflect that? Are the things that I do and say with my life consistent with the baptismal promises that I have made and affirmed? Have you looked at those promises lately? Are there things that I know that I ought to change, or at least that I know that I ought to do? Well, this is the time. Take the time. Make the time. Do a survey of yourself. In recovery groups, I think they say something like this. Take a fearless moral inventory of your life. It's a good time to ask God for forgiveness for what we have done or what we have failed to do. A time to ask God for new direction and a stronger sense of purpose. This is the time. Friends, I want to share with you that all this week long, your council has been sharing emails back and forth with one another. And we have been talking about what I shared with you last week as we uh, got word from the uh, Chapel Trail folks about the, the unit that is available out there. Well, finally they said it is available. Uh, the problem was that they said it'll be $6,000 a month uh, and they'll give us five years. And we said, hmm, we, we were thinking less per month than long time. <laughs> and so it's not an offer that we can't refuse. It's actually an offer that we're not sure that we can begin to accept. And so the questions arose in our, our group. Jerry, who has become our, our uh, local uh, uh, expert, I'll call him, uh, on finding properties and, and, and seeing opportunities and, and sharing those with the council, and we've been sharing them back and forth and seeing what's going on, and, and I wrote one, one email response, and I said, I think I'm rambling, you know, because I had so many things going on. And the council members wrote back and said, yeah, we probably are rambling. What we need is to take a moment. We need to take some time. We need to focus where we're at. We need to pray. We need to ask God. We need to have a, a vision opportunity, which we were planning to have, and it got rescheduled, and now we're going to really focus on that. It's called Dream Leaders. We're going to share more about that with the whole congregation, because it's not just for or about the council. It's about all of us and who we are as people of God, and what do we see ourselves as doing and being in this community, we need to take that time so that we can focus our attention on the things that God is calling us to do and get a grasp on just what is the mission that God is calling us towards. Because we need to understand, as the hymn that we're going to sing, that we are about God's work. Because we sing together, Lord, you gave the great commission. Make us worthy. Lord, you call us to service. Help us to do that. Lord, you take us, we who are just the common everyday folk, and you make our lives holy. And so we need to take the time to wait and watch and pray. My sister says it every time, right? Take the time and see what God is calling us. And by that same spirit, we can join together and say, Christ is risen. He is He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You do not disappoint. In the name of the Father and the Son.